Pat and I are at the Shiloh battlefield and we're near the position where Sidney Johnston was found reeling in the saddle. He had actually, if you want to turn that camera that way and show that field, he actually led a charge in that field. Uh, it was the highest ranking charge in American history. It was Sidney Johnston who was the second ranking Confederate general. Uh, Governor Isham Harris helped lead it, and ex-Vice President John C. Breckinridge helped lead the charge. These three guys are leading the charge on, in that field. Well, Johnston had been in a duel back in Texas, and he had a, been shot in the leg and, and had nerve damage, so he didn't feel the bullet that hit him in the back of the knee. Uh, actually, one cut his boot, one hit him in the back of the knee, and it didn't cut the femoral artery, it just severed half of it and so he's bleeding out he's got high cavalry boots on so his boots filling with blood and he sends all these guys his aides to go and, and do send messages and governor harris comes up here and finds him and he's just about to go and he says are you wounded and johnson says yes i fear severely but he didn't know where he didn't know where he'd been hit he didn't feel it and so Go ahead, Pat. Well, I was just going to say the likelihood, a uh, good, good probability, it was a Confederate round. That, yeah, that yeah, because he was leading the Confederates and he was hitting the back of the knee. And the, the surgeon said it was a uh, infield, which is what the Confederates were carrying here. So if if the surgeon knew an infield, I don't know how you'd look the bullet tough as infield or Springfield. Oh. It's especially this early in the war, but they, that's what he claimed he dug an infield bullet out. Um, so Harris grabs him keeps him from falling off the horse and leads him into this ravine. We're about to go down here and show you where he died. So they bring him down here and take him off the horse. And uh, Sam Watkins is up here on the ridge. When they actually finish, when he dies, they take his body back. They're under orders not to tell anyone that he's dead. So they come by and, and, and Sam Watkins says, some guys said, who is that? And they said, it's a Texas colonel but it was General Johnston. Beauregard thought they'd get demoralized if they found out he was dead. Uh, but it's not on here, but I'd read where when they laid him down here and they pulled his boot off, the blood actually traveled downhill for about eight or 10 feet, mm. began to pool in a low spot. And uh, uh, Pat, talk about that tourniquet and his doctor. He, he, well, uh, he, <laughs> a simple tourniquet may have uh, Which he had in his coat pocket. <laughs> and he, but he had previously ordered his personal physician to go treat both Union and Confederate uh, wounded equally, and consequently, there was a, he he paid the ultimate price. Yep. How do you think this Shiloh would have turned out had he survived? Same way. Same way. Yeah, because once, well, Pat summed it all up. Fat ass old Buell hadn't arrived, we would have won. <laughs> <laughs> them, all them reinforcements and Lou Wallace coming in with a fresh division of 5,000 men from Crump's Landing, they were in trouble. They couldn't. Uh, it's a myth that Beauregard lost the battle by calling it off. Because by the time they capture Prentice and, and take the Hornet's Nest position, they don't have time to get organized force over there and push Grant off them heights. There's no way. And basically, they lost the battle when Beauregard's staff officer used the Napoleon's Waterloo battle plan and put his corps in four lines, and they just become intermingled, and they're not hitting them with everything they got at once, but just with a wave and then another wave, and it gives them time to get their self organized. But that's all I got to say about that. No, I do like to pass time. You gotta find out. I found one of the safe 